Let me tell you something about me. I love using smaller phones, like the Galaxy S10, but you've probably never actually caught me switching to one. I really like being able to properly grip the device, being able to access most of the screen with one finger, and being able to put it in my pocket without feeling like I'm trying to lug a book around in there. But there's one thing that stops me from doing this, it's the fact that smaller phones have much smaller batteries, and that kind of sucks, but let me explain why it's a really fixable problem. So let's take the Galaxy S10 as an example. The battery inside takes up about 25% of the available space, a quarter. But you can tell straight away, looking inside this thing, what the design philosophy was. Samsung has tried to build a smartphone that's as thin as possible, whilst being good enough at everything. You can see all the components here are jam-packed together, and it's needed so that they can fit everything from the triple cameras to the headphone jack, as well as all the rubber elements that give it water resistance. On one hand, this doesn't leave much room for the battery, hence why we're left with a pretty mediocre 3400 mAh cell. But what it also means, the flip side of this, is that if they built a slightly thicker phone and used all of that extra space for battery, the results would be incredible. Let me give you an example. So what I'm drawing out right now is our visualization of a smartphone. We're gonna split it into four quadrants or four equal parts, and a quarter is going to be battery, because like we said, about 25% of the phone is battery. Now, let's say we made that phone thicker, and all of the extra space we're adding on top of it is just going to be battery. What you'd find is that because battery was only taking up one of the four quadrants in the phone originally, but at the same time we'll be taking up all four quadrants of this extension we're adding, for each part we're extending the phone, we're raising the amount of battery by four times the normal amount. And so, if you increased this smartphone's thickness by just 10%, you could increase battery capacity by 40%, and by implication, if you increased it by 20%, your battery could be 80% larger. So, instead of trying to fit everything into a 7.8mm body, let's just say we give this phone another 15% of depth, and we used all of it for battery. We'd end up with a device that has 8.97mm of total thickness, about 195 grams of mass, but more importantly, a 5440 mAh battery. Now, I get it, those dimensions may sound unwieldy, but we've got a phone right here, the Nokia 2.2. This is 9.3mm thick, and it doesn't feel too chunky. In terms of the weight, you've got phones like the OnePlus 7 Pro, this thing weighs 206 grams, and even though this is a heavy phone, its bigger problem comes from its other dimensions, not really its weight. Okay, let me actually give you another example. So this right here is the Galaxy S10 5G, and if we added another millimeter onto the phone's width, you could expect about 200 milliamp hours of extra battery capacity, but if we added the same amount, if we added one millimeter onto the depth of the phone, you could expect about 2,000. You see, length and width are dimensions that are already being taken good advantage of, but the depth of phones really isn't. Now, I'm not sure I'd want a phone that's already this big to be thicker, but I would definitely want to be able to use smaller screen phones without having to dismiss them because I know they won't last. Plus, extra battery life is about much more than just not needing to charge your phone overnight. The Galaxy S10 has this incredible feature in that it can reverse wireless charge other devices, but the ironic part of that is that it doesn't have enough capacity in itself that you ever really have any spare. Jumping from 3400 mAh to 5440 is enough to move your phone from being the reliant gadget to becoming the reliable gadget. Enough to change it from that device that you should probably also keep a power bank with, to the phone that is a power bank, the one that you can comfortably use and use to keep your earphones charged and use as a hotspot for your laptop. Not to mention, a larger battery means a smartphone that you can keep for longer, without it becoming unusable. Okay, or to put this whole thing another way, how many times do you hear people complaining that their phone's battery dies too fast, versus how many times do you hear people complaining that they wish their phone was a millimeter slimmer. Now, I say this, but there's a distinct reason why companies don't just start making their phones like this, and it has nothing to do with what's best for the consumer. When an average non-techie person goes into a store to buy a phone, there's a few factors they consider. 
the top priority is almost always price, then software, is it Android or is it an iPhone, and then we have design and display. Battery capacity is notably absent, and my best guess why would be because it's seen as too complicated a specification, and that it's just easier to tell people, yeah, it'll last all day. And so, battery is one of those things that flies under the radar, because it's not usually an issue in the first couple of months with a phone, but because batteries deteriorate over time, it's almost always one of the biggest issues a couple of years in. People often just attribute it to, my phone's getting old, I should probably get an upgrade. As opposed to, this company should have put a battery in that is still workable a couple of years later. And so, this attitude plays to the advantage of smartphone makers, and they've got no reason to change it. Let's take OnePlus. OnePlus is generally really good at keeping even their older phones up to date. The OnePlus 3 from early 2016 is still getting their latest Android Pie update, and so if I'm using one of those phones, it's got decent hardware, it's still getting the latest features, I've got very little incentive to fork out 700 for their latest and greatest, unless my battery starts failing. Which, as things stand, it will, because it's coupling a small 3000 mAh cell with a unibody design that makes it pretty tricky for an average consumer to replace the battery. The phone is designed to fail, as are 98% of smartphones out there. Also, it's true that you can't just make a phone thicker and then create some squiggly battery that fills all the remaining gaps. You would have to rethink the internal structure, but if that's factored in when a phone is being planned, then it's not really an issue. On top of this, extra space inside a phone isn't just about battery. Even if a company didn't want to squeeze a ton of extra juice in there, they could add a headphone jack to a phone that doesn't already have one. They could add a heatsink or just room around components for better airflow and temperatures. Or they could use the extra space to fit more powerful telephoto cameras, as opposed to the standard two times zoom that you see on almost every flagship. In fact, even if they did nothing with that extra space, a thicker device is less likely to bend or deform. If you enjoyed this video, I'm going to drop a link to my smartphone news playlist. Do check it out, there's a lot of similar interesting concepts there. And with that being said, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I will catch you in the next one.